Okay, let's do this vocab tutorial for weeks 11 and 12. The first word is acquit. And I would circle the part of the definition that you should study. Pronounce not guilty. This has to do with court trials, of course. The sentence says, two of the defendants were convicted of first degree murder. The third was acquitted. So here is how I would learn this word. Acquit, quit accusing, because he's not guilty. Okay, acquittal. This is just the noun form. Um, it's a, and here's, I don't like their definition. I would study verdict of not guilty. Acquittal is a verdict of not guilty. Notice that the opposite of acquittal is conviction. The opposite of acquit is convict. All right, um, so complex. I would circle and study hard to understand, but I would also know the synonyms complicated. That's complex, like if you're trying to um, well, look at the sentence. I would never try to repair a mechanism so complex as a wristwatch, but I can easily replace a watch band. I bet none of y'all even wear watches, maybe smart watches. Okay, so complex, and also you need to know the synonym intricate. I looked to make sure, and this is tested on one of the two quizzes, I use the synonym complicated, and on the other quiz, I use the synonym intricate. So you do need to know both. Notice that the opposite of complex is simple. I think you would already know that. Complexity is the noun version of this word. Um, I would use it like, wow, the complexity of that physics test just killed me. Um, the difficulty. And then the opposite of complexity is simplicity. The next word I need to explain because I'm not crazy about the definition they give and I'm not sure that y'all are really familiar with this word consign, consign. This is a verb. I would study hand over, but I need to explain it or that definition is not gonna make a lick of sense. So when she was much younger, my younger sister opened up a resale shop. Uh, it was, it dealt with children's clothing. And uh, she would, uh, people would give her clothes on consignment. That is when their kids outgrew those clothes, they would bring those clothes and hand them over to my sister who would then sell them. Now, my sister sold um, the, the clothes at, you know, cheaper than you could buy them brand new, of course, but uh, because those clothes were given to her on consignment, they were handed over to her. Whatever the selling price was, she gave a percentage of that selling pr price back to the, the, the lady who had brought the clothes in. Okay, so hand over, consign. I'm not going to make you know consignee uh, because that word is just really rarely used except in legal terms. But back to consign, notice the sentence. After they were sentenced to prison, the two convicts were consigned to prison. Maybe that's saying like after the judge sentenced them, after they were sentenced, the two convicts were handed over to prison. They were consigned to prison. Okay, the next word is effrontery, and I would put an asterisk by this because there's there are going to be at least two or three questions on each quiz with this word effrontery. I don't, I'm not crazy about the definition of shameless boldness, but that's what you need to circle, um, or I wouldn't circle it, but I would undermine it or whatever your system is, 
because that is listed on one of the two quizzes. That is the synonym that you have to match up. Shameless boldness. Now, let me explain. Oh, do you see the word gall? Why don't you circle gall? Because didn't we really, didn't we just have that recently? I hope I'm not mixed up, but I think we did. And in parentheses, maybe you should write the word nerve. Like, I cannot believe she had the gall to steal my boyfriend. I can't believe she had the nerve to steal my boyfriend. Uh, I can't believe she had the temerity. You must underline temerity because on one of the two quizzes, I even make you identify that synonym. I can't believe she had the effrontery to steal my boyfriend after everything I've done for her. I can't believe she had the nerve. So I don't, I wish uh, Evelyn Williams were here. She would tell you a little trick for how you could learn that. She was the, she was such, she was so great with that. Look at the sentence. Her cousin had the effrontery to come to the party even though he had not been invited. Ah, oh, okay. Um, maybe you could remember it like going to the front door when you are supposed to go to the back door. But, oh, that's negative. Okay, well, anyway, excruciating. Excruciating, I would underline in study, unbearably painful. Maybe you should also underline agonizing because it's not just physically unbearably painful. It can be, uh, maybe you are so, you can think back to a time when you were so embarrassed and you were just, it was just an excruciating experience to be so embarrassed. Boy, I have so many examples and stories I could give you, but I don't want to take the time. But agonizingly embarrassing, that would be excruciatingly embarrassing. Then the next word is one that I love so much, forbearance. Now, this is a, a verb to forbear with someone, but we are focusing on the noun version, showing forbearance to people. I would circle patience because that is such a good definition. Um, I feel like I need to show forbearance sometimes with uh, a particular afternoon class of mine because uh, they can be quite rowdy and I want to, it says the act of forbearing or refraining, uh, sometimes when I might feel like um, showing more impatience, I need to show patience. Hey, I know how you could learn this if you're, if you're struggling. You know, if I say, class, please bear with me while I take attendance, um, I'm asking you to show forbearance with me, to show patience, when otherwise you might be irritated with me. Okay, and then the opposite of forbearance is anger. Wow, I was noticing when I was preparing for this tutorial how very many antonyms are given for these words as well as synonyms. So definitely you would need to know that the opposite of showing forbearance is showing anger. Um, hamper, maybe you already know this. I think, um, I like the sentence, we tried to leave the stadium quickly, but the dense crowd hampered our progress. It interfered with, it hindered, it impeded. Do you know those words, impede, hinder, uh, hamper, hinder? That sounds a lot alike. If you know that word, that would help you. So the opposite of hampering uh, progress is helping or aiding progress. All right, then we come to nettlesome. Nettlesome, I would completely scratch out the literal part of the definition, which is in the first line. I would focus on irritating, causing annoyance, causing vexation, um, nettlesome. How can we safely dispose of nuclear waste? 
So far, no satisfactory answer has been found to this nettlesome question. I think, of course, more about nettlesome behavior. Um, I, I, I think of, I, I don't want to give specific examples lest you, uh, well, I think we've all had classes, haven't we, where there has been nettlesome behavior by a few students. Okay, then we come to oblivious. Uh, I would circle unmindful. It gives not aware, it gives forgetful, but really oblivious is just, a, I think of a person who's oblivious as they are just clueless. They are completely unmindful of something that the rest of us are thinking is obvious, but it's not obvious to them, they're oblivious. Um, she had promised to wait, but she walked off without me, oblivious of her promise, unmindful that she had promised that to me. And then we come to the noun version, the condition of being forgotten. That's what I would study, oblivion. Um, like, I'm sure that you have, you're familiar with maybe a YouTube star that has ephemeral popularity, ephemeral or temporary fame, but then they just fade into oblivion. Nobody talks about them a year or two later. Then we come to a great word, prodigious. Prodigious. When we read A Tale of Two Cities, you are going to read about prodigious suffering by the poor peasants in France. And prodigious means, it says, extraordinary in amount or size. This is the part of the definition that I would study, only I might replace extraordinary with enormous because um, enormous in amount like maybe you pay a prodigious amount of money for an autographed copy of To Kill a Mockingbird. If you're a book collector, that's going to cost you a prodigious amount of money. Um, maybe uh, you have a prodigious crop. It's, it's an enormous uh, crop. In, in size. I like the sentence, in one year there was a prodigious increase in the cost of oil. Prices nearly tripled. Yikes. Um, then we come to prodigy and it says person of extraordinary talent or ability and then it says wonder. I would put young person of extraordinary talent or ability a child wonder. We think of Mozart who uh, was composing pieces, masterpieces at the age of five, who played before kings as a five-year-old. I can't even imagine. So obviously he was a prodigy. Then rejuvenate. Rejuvenate says make young or youthful again. Reinvigorate, refresh. It gives you the sentence, a good night's sleep will rejuvenate you and you will wake up feeling refreshed. If you're having trouble uh, learning this definition, of course, J-U-V has to do with juvenile and you know that's young, youthful. Uh, so rejuvenate is to make young or youthful again. Then we come to residue and I would underline remainder, leftover, but this is not talking about, oh, I'm going to eat some residue for supper. No, that's not that kind of leftover. It's talking about whatever is left after a certain part is taken. You're left, you know, you can see a residue. Look at the sentence, it's great. The flood water receded, leaving a residue of mud in the streets. That's a pretty good definition then residual is just the adjective form of residue. So a residue would be a 
thing that was left over, whether whereas residual, uh, it would be describing. And I guess that word could be used to describe, for example, let's say that your ex broke up with you and you have uh, forgiven him, but sometimes you just feel this urge to just give him a kick. Yikes, that kind of, sounds kind of violent, and I'm really not a violent person, but uh, that, res that might indicate, if you wanted to give him a kick, that might indicate that you have some residual bitterness towards him, some leftover bitterness. All right, then we come to salutary. You don't hear this word so much, but I love this word because I like to study healthful, curative, beneficial. Um, hopefully you know what those words mean. Uh, a winter in the South had a salutary effect on Manny. His cough disappeared. The icy Northern climate would have been deleterious to his health deleterious is harmful. So you're definitely going to need to know that antonym. I wanted to give you a side note in case you don't already know this, and I'm, I imagine if you were like me, or if you were like I, I should say, you would not know this, because I did not grow up knowing this difference. But did you know that uh, healthy should only be used as an adjective to describe your physical condition? not if something is good for you, not if something is salutary or beneficial. For example, if you uh, want to have a healthful food for supper, you might order a salad and not eat much dressing on it. That would be salutary, that would be healthful, a healthful food choice. But you hear this used incorrectly all the time. People will say, oh, I need to make a healthy food choice. No, you need to make a healthful food choice. But just add that to the long list of things I did not know until I was much older. But I'm trying to save you those embarrassing moments that I've had. Then we come to scrutinize. Scrutinize, I would study examine very closely. After scrutinizing my driver's license to see if there were any prior violations, the officer returned it to me. Okay, and then the noun version of scrutinize is scrutiny. And so I would circle inspection, only I would add the word close in front of it, and I would study close inspection. Like, um, I felt like I was under the scrutiny of the teacher because she kept looking at me, staring at me while I was taking my test. Okay, then we come to supersede. This is a word that you might be tempted just to hurry and rush over because like consign or effrontery, you might not already be familiar with it, but that's the opposite thing you need to do. You really need to pay more attention to this word. So supersede, I would, I would underline replace. Uh, look at the sample sentence. In many businesses, paper wrapping has been superseded by plastic, or maybe we should say paper bags in the grocery stores were superseded by uh, plastic. I wish they hadn't been. I know that using paper bags uh, hurts, you know, destroys trees, but oh my goodness, I think plastic bags are such an enemy of the environment. A uh, supersede. Let's see. Mr. Trevino superseded Mr. Roberts as principal. He replaced him. Then we come to the word sweltering. It's an adjective. Oppressively hot. I can't remember if torrid is used on the quiz as a synonym. I'm thinking it's not, but I'm not 100% sure. The antonym is frigid because you're freezing if it's frigid and you're sweating if it's sweltering. So that's how I would remember it. Swelter, sweat, frigid, freeze. Um, 
swelter is the verb. Okay, unruffled, unruffled, it's an adjective. It means, I would study, calm, cool, unflustered. Boy, not too often would someone describe me as unruffled, despite the chaos. Nope, that's not, that, that would not describe myself. Um, you do need to know the antonym discomposed. Well, if a person were composed, she would be very calm, despite the chaos of sixth period, for example. But, no. Unruffled would be calm, cool, unflustered. The opposite, discomposed. Most of us were discomposed by these sudden new developments, but Eleanor remained unruffled. Perhaps if you imagine ruffling a chicken's feathers, that chicken would not appreciate that. No, and she would not be calm or cool. All right, then we come to unwieldy. This is a great word hard to wield, hard to handle because of size or weight. Sometimes, you know, you can have a super large box and it's, it's unwieldy, not because it's heavy, but just because it's so cumbersome, it's so bulky. Will you please help me dispose of the empty refrigerator carton? It is too unwieldy for one person to carry out. And then, so we might talk about the unwieldiness of this huge box. It wasn't heavy, but it was difficult to move because of its size, its bulkiness. Then withdraw, I think you know this word, like if I withdraw money from the bank, I'm removing money from the bank, but if I'm depositing, I'm placing more money in the bank. Or we might talk about a uh, an army withdrawing from, um, from a maneuver to retreat or to leave as th and the opposite of a military withdrawal or retreat would be a military advancement or advance. Um, then we come to zany. Zany as an adjective means clownish. Warren would squirt you with a water pistol for a laugh. He has a zany sense of humor. Uh, or you could just call Warren a zany. You'd say, oh, he is such a zany uh, clown. Do y'all know the word buffoon? I don't think that I had that on the quiz, but I'll try to double check. Buffoon and Tory. Okay, that's it. Study your words. If you want to ask any questions about them in class, that would be super. I always love to talk about words. Goodbye.